Oh wait, it's not this video. Hey guys, Ron here with BBM Reptiles. Thank you again for taking the time for stopping by my channel. And if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and follow me along on this incredible journey of reptile keeping, specifically working with ball pythons. Well, this video actually, I wanted to talk about incubations and placement of your incubator. Now, if you're just incubating for the very first time um, this year, or if you're planning in the future, there's certain things actually that I would suggest that you do. These are things that basically help me out and making different transitions each season. Now, um, one thing definitely is important is the placement of your incubator. When you place your incubator, you wanna make sure that you're at least preparing it at least a month in advance. Now, when I say a month in advance of an expected due date of a clutch, it's that time that'll give you to tweak out the temperature, basically work out your thermostats, give you time just in case your heat tape is, is not running correctly, and then you can graduate and work with the pitch of the temperature and the humidity and make sure it sustains itself. Now, the other main important thing, and this is something that happened to me personally. Now, um, I placed my incubator in this snake room which you see here and if you see my past videos um or i think actually one of my very first videos i showed my my clut my incubator where it was which was on this side of the room the problem was is that the sun it would came to a point that the ambient temperature or the sunlight and because the incubator was so close to the sunlight it would actually raise the temperature it wouldn't make a difference basically if i set my my um my thermometer or my thermostat at 86 or 87 fahrenheit it would basically jack it up all up all up up as high up until 95 and um i know in my last in my last channel actually i did make the comment that it came to a point that i can even leave the incubator door open because the heat would be actually absorbed from the sun so to avoid that this is something that I personally do um, I removed my incubator from where the sun sets now the sun sets on my house on the west side and obviously the sun um, starts to rise on the east so when it's the strongest it's basically between noon and seven o'clock that's when it's the strongest and basically the wall and my my house is made out of cement it's like a battery it's actually draining up all the heat from the sun and it's not until basically two or three in the morning when the temperature starts actually leveling down and i've noticed in my incubator the, the temperature where it was, like I said, going extremely high. So like I said, the best thing to do about that is move your incubator from a different position. Place it somewhere besides uh, um, not area where the sun sets and basically, like for example, there's a lot of fortunate people that they have um, basements and basically that's more than enough to actually control it and you're good. But if you live in a complex or apartment building, or in a house and basically you have your snake room and your incubator by chance you do have it placed next to a window where the sun is setting remember that's when it's the strongest you want to move that incubator to a different room you want to take it somewhere else opposite from where the sun sets because like i said that will that will drastically increase the temperature on your thermostat and the inside incubator and, and there has been situations that some breeders were unfortunate enough that they actually cook their eggs because of that spike and that had nothing to do with the electricity it was just basically that heat moment basically it and i said basically a lot oh my gosh <laughs> i gotta avoid that um it's something that you have to tune out but like i said it's really good when you go through different channels and you see different breeders they'll give you your tips and my personal experience i had with the incubation i moved my incubator so i know i'm not going to be worrying about that the only thing that actually gets me a little bit nervous or actually actually upset is always listening to those roosters in the background i mean like it's if it's not the roosters it's the ice cream truck but anyway 
Um, going back to that, I also wanted to show you how my temperature is showing in the incubation and the actual thermostat setting. And I was fortunate enough to actually get two snakes lay clutches the same day. I want you to see me also setting those up and give you an idea how amazing this season for me personally is going. So with all this, just have a look. You just do a little walk by of basically what I'm doing just to give you an idea just in case you are starting out or you're planning breeding in the near future. Okay, so this is where I finally decide to move my incubator just to keep it away from sunlight. As you can see right here, this is the wall. I have no windows access besides basically um, from the front of the house. But um, on this side of the house, the sun is rising and since the neighbor's house is basically right next to the, the wall here, I don't have any issues of the heat heating up the walls and because it's the early morning sun. And um, I have my temperature right there. Let's see, we got it at 88. The set probe's at 88. Oh, sticker shout outs. I need more sticker guys, I really do. So going back to the incubator, more or less, there you go, set to 89. So I'm keeping it away from heat source, in other words, where the sun sets. That way I can avoid the um, outside temperature raising higher than what it should, the final incubation. Okay, something I actually didn't mention before um, when I'm about to separate the, the female from her clutch is I like to create a warm bath because basically what I do is I'll transport the snake into the warm water. And basically I make sure that the temperature is within the temperature that she already is at right now. So right now you see it's 88, it's at 88 degrees. That's more or less the tub or the temperature she is. And I just use a drop of Dawn. A drop of the soap. I, I have this exclusively when I'm actually um, cleaning my my snakes. And gosh, I had this this bottle. I had it closed for three years, and I only use it specifically for when I'm baiting the the females after she laid her eggs. Now, as you can see, I already got my perlites ready, and um, I have the bottles also. But I wanted to show you something else. Oh, excuse the slippers. I'm sorry. Anyway, this is the baby room, and right here I'm having the the clutches are what I have so far that laid. I haven't actually put the amount the dream be laid, but you know, I have to put it in there as soon as I'm done. But this is a cool thing I did. I actually did this uh, an extra job for my son. I gave him a schedule. I gave him a schedule of actually cleaning the snakes and he has to go through it daily. And it is a note right there. If by 7 p.m., if I find a snake that defecated, there's a $2 penalty per snake. And right there, I'm starting them low. I'm starting at $15 a week. I mean, like, heck, as he grows up or he grows up the collections and he starts learning the value of this, obviously, he's going to get a bigger raise than that. But basically, all he has to do is worry about the babies. That's all he has to worry about. He doesn't have to worry about the large snakes. Anyway, this is my main incubator. Not my main incubator. This is my very, very first incubator. And that is where I'm storing the water that I'm using to basically when I put into with the perlite because I want to make sure that the water is at 89 degrees. So with that other incubator that I have, which is the large one, if it ever gets filled up, then I have this one as a backup. Like I call it my backup, Jenny. But the thing is, is this is the one that I have for backup just in case. And that's where I have the tubs and basically... Um, what I'm going to use for the gray for actually the separating. Let me just pull this out. Now this is um, this is what I was talking about. The mesh. And I found that I had actually more of them. And the, the, the light diffuser. Now, I mean like heck. I know there's those hatch rate trays. And hopefully when I get to Tinley, I'll be able to get a few of those. But until I can get one, you know, this is the next best thing. And going back over here. The idea basically of all this is this. Once this has the water, I like to put that mesh on top of it. Then I like to put the light diffuser.
And when the, the eggs start pipping, I will re re actually remove the diffuser and I'll just leave this. And basically with that alone, I won't have no worries about the baby, the snake entwining itself within this light diffuser. Anyway, let's start get moving that snake. Okay, now. This is the part that a lot of people worry about getting bit. Now, usually, and the thing is, it's around 8.20, I believe, my time, 8.20 a.m. Usually, they lay between 7 and 11. My wife woke up to go to work, and she told me at 4.30 in the morning she was already laying. So, basically, she's past that point. And what I mean by that is, is usually just after they lay, they get into that day's state. That it's real easy to move the, the, the snake off the eggs. But now since it has been a few hours, it's been more than four hours, you can see she's tightly coiled around it. So she might get a little bit offensive. And let's see if I can actually do this without, as you can see, yeah, she's, she's getting a little feisty. But let's see if I can actually do this. And I can already tell that she's done. But I just want to actually remove her without actually. No, she's not letting me. I'm going to have to put this on pause. I'm going to use. I need both hands for this one. Okay. Now that I actually got her off the eggs. And she had she had a good grip on the eggs. Um, you can see. Because this is what I want to check. I want to see that, that indent in there. So that I know that basically she's off the eggs. Or basically she has nothing left on her. And as you can see, she's she's manageable. The reason why she's manageable is because she hasn't been on the leg on the eggs that long. So she's still in that day's state. So it's real basically easy to handle. So right now, I'm going to put her in her bath. Keep her in here for a while. While I actually get a chance to candle the eggs. And go through each one. And since she, she did have a good grip on them, basically moving them around was kind of hard. But from what I can see... You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eggs. Wow, this is the season of the sevens because all my all my snakes has been dropping sevens. I mean, like it's last season I've been getting 10, 12, but so far the three, the first two snakes, they laid seven. Well, the first one was six, the second one was eight, and this one was seven. So let's put these babies, well, actually let's candle them. Okay, now... We're going to go into my place of learning. <laughs> it's the darkest place I have in the room, the house, actually. So, let's get to the candling. Okay, let me put the marker here so I have easy access to it. And we're going to start looking for some veins, first of all. And as you can see, there's veins on that one. That's not an issue. And there's veins on that one. As a matter of fact, that is the air bubble. Let's see if I can actually get this. That is the air bubble right there. Maybe I could just move this away a little bit. That's the bubble that I was talking about right there. Right there, you see if I jiggle it a little bit, you see it forms like a little circle. That's the air bubble that I'm looking for. Okay. <laughs> and I know I guess sometimes people joke around, why does this guy use forks? He could use golf tees. Dude, if I didn't have forks, I wouldn't be able to actually make that makeshift grate for um for that boo bag that I actually put in yesterday. So forks it is for me. And besides Q-tips, I've used it in the past and they will create fungus. So we're start lining each of them up right now before I set them up. And there you go. That's the final results. I mean, like, I've had clutches of 10, and it's a tight fit. And I know those hatch rays, I believe they hold up to 10. But you don't want to know something? I make sure that if we even go through whatever earthquake that actually happens here, nothing's going to be rocking or moving those eggs. So... The pack of 200 only cost me a dollar in Walmart, so it's not like, you know, it's knocking me off that much. So it's a good idea to use those forks, those forks actually as, um, as plastic holds between each of these eggs. Okay, this is a spider. I believe she has like nine eggs or eight, um, but I haven't actually took her out yet because she's been on it for a while. And as you can see, she's real active. 
So I'm actually waiting for my wife to get home because since this is her snake, I want her to actually get bitten. No, not really. I just want her to actually to pull the clutch because this is her, this is her project. So I wanted her to actually go through the whole thing. Now, this was a large clutch. This was actually a clutch of nine eggs from that spider and it was bred to a male banana black pastel enchi. And these are like thick eggs. I'm surprised actually how, how large they are. It gave me actually problems and I thought I might have to use a second tub for it, but thankfully I was able to maneuver it all. So make sure it doesn't actually touch the sides of the tub. Okay, as you can see, 90 degrees, 71 is a humidity. 90 degrees, 69, 90 degrees also on the bottom. So far we have four clutches and the boob that I separated. But the point that I wanted to show is that basically it's away from, right there, you see the main window. That's where the sun sets. So from 12 o'clock noon until basically seven o'clock at night, it's a constant sun beaming. So keep it in this area here. I have it set at 88 degrees and it's marking 87 now because I have the door open. But basically that's what's gonna stay at 90 degrees. That's the difference of actually moving your incubator to somewhere opposite where the sun sets. But as you can see, I'm having a great start with the breeding season. I still have some more females that are about to dry, so drop some eggs. So I had to make sure that I actually move my incubator to a separate area, just avoid that heat spikes. And that's something if you're breeding for the first time, you wanna make sure you don't get yourself in that situation. Well anyway, guys, guys, thank you very much for taking the time for stopping by. And again, if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe, subscribe button and also hit that bell. Every time I upload a new video, you will be notified. So thank you very much for stopping Stopping by, and until the next time, dude, I gotta hurry up. <laughs> Ice cream truck just circled my block three times, and you know I want that Choco Taco. I'll see you in the next video.